Hello, welcome to Advanced Composites. Today is the start of the fifth week of this course and starting this week we will start developing some new knowledge in the area of composites. Uh, specifically, first we will develop governing equations which determine the mechanics of advanced composites specifically laminated composite plates and then we will also learn a couple of tricks uh, to solve these equations. Till so far what we have done is we have learned how to predict the uh, engineering constants of single layer composites specifically EL, ET, nu LT, GLT and so on and so forth. Then we learned how to compute Q bar matrix using these values of engineering constants for a single layer. And then finally what we have learned till so far is how to compute A, B and D matrices and these matrices how do they link the strains and curvatures in laminated composite plates to force and moment resultants. And lastly we also learnt a couple of failure theories about individual layers and then we extended that knowledge to failure of composite plates and in that context we also came across the idea of progressive failure of composite laminated plates. So that is what we have covered. So the next thing what we will do is governing equations. for composites and specifically we will talk about composite plates. So I would like to make couple of points in this context. First is that we had learnt the force and moment resultants they are related to mid plane strains and mid plane curvatures through this relation. So, these are mid plane curvatures and mid plane uh, strains and mid plane curvatures. One thing I would like to reiterate is that these relations are good only if the plate for, so these are good only for plates. So, what is a plate? A plate is you know a stack up of composite materials which has when it is not loaded it has no curvature. No curvature. So, these uh, laminate uh, these equations may not be necessarily true for curved systems for shells, for cylinders, for spheres and things like that. But if we have a plate in use, so it can be of this shape or it can be of any shape, but as long as the curvature of the plate is not there, it is, we call it a plate. So, from a structural standpoint that is a plate and these equations are valid only if we are considering plates. So, this is uh, one important thing to consider. The second thing is that these relations help us compute. So, if we know n and m then we can compute epsilon and k or if we know epsilon and k then we can compute n and m. But most of the times the problem is not whether we know n and m or epsilon and k, but we may have some force huh, on a plate this force it may not be necessarily uniformly distributed and then it may the plate may also be loaded in the transverse direction q. Okay. So, in that case 
we for at any point let us say x and y we do not necessarily know what is the value of n and m. So, this is unknown we do not know what is n or m and if we do not know what is n or m then we cannot compute anything when we cannot compute mid plane strains we cannot compute mid plane uh, curvatures and because of that we do not know what are the stresses in individual layers. So, we cannot even predict the deflection or uh, stresses or failure of the plate. So, the question is that if we know the overall situation that how the plate is loaded on its exteriors we know how it is being acted upon by different forces and moments and also it is being loaded in the transverse direction by this uh, load q uh, Newton's per square meter then how, how do we compute n and m that is what is the basic question because once we know n and m then we can compute mid plane strains mid plane curvatures and then apply level strains apply level per curvatures apply level stresses and we can deflect uh, find out the failure and so on and so forth. So, that is what we plan to start thinking about and that is what I imply by that we are going to develop governing equations for composite plates. So, whenever we are talking about composite plates and if we talk about mid plane uh, I am sorry about uh, force and moment resultants then these force and moment resultants by definition they act on the mid plane of the plate they may act on the mid plane of the plate. So, let us say this is the mid plane of a plate. So, I am not drawing any thickness it is the mid plane of the plate and I am positioning my axis system let us say in this direction hmm. this is the axis system x and y and at the mid plane. So, let us say this is a small this is a very small rectangular piece this length is delta x and this length is delta y. Okay. So, it is a mid plane small piece of plate represented by its mid plane length is delta x width is delta y and let us say at the center at the center of the plate the values of n's and m's are so at so at center at center that is at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 value of n x is n x then we have n y n x y m x m y and m x y. Okay. So, these force and moment resultants n x n y n x y m x m y m x y they exist at the center of the plate. So, once we know that by Taylor series expansion we can say that in this direction on the edge of this small component what is the value of n x it will be n x plus del n x over del x times delta x over 2 this is from Taylor series expansion there are higher order terms also, but we are ignoring those terms. Similarly, on the other side we have n x minus del n x over del x times delta x over 2. Then let us look at shears. So, on this side we have this shear will be n x y plus del n x y divided by del times delta y over 2 and on this other surface. So, it will be n x y minus del n x y over del y times delta y over 2. Okay. So, this is the story for n x likewise we also will have n y s. So, 
on the positive side this will be n y and this will be n y plus del n y over del y times delta y over 2 and on the other side we have n y minus del n y over del y times delta y over 2. And lastly we have to talk about n y x. So, actually I made a small mistake and I have to be consistent. So, n y x is on the y plane mathematically they are identical n y x and n x y are same. So, mathematically it does not make a difference, but we have to be consistent. So, I will write it correctly. So, that is there. Okay. So, now I put n x y. So, this is n x y and this is n x y plus del n x y over del x times delta x over 2 and on the other surface the other n x y resultant is its value is n x y minus del n x y over del x times delta x over 2. Okay. So, what we have put in this figure are all the force resultants on all the four edges of the small plate element. We have not put moment resultants on this plate element. We will put that in another picture, but this is the representation. Now, if the plate is in equilibrium, what is the condition for equilibrium? What is the condition for equilibrium? The condition for equilibrium is that sum of forces in x direction should be 0, sum of forces in y direction it should be 0 and sum of forces in z direction it should be 0. This is 1 and then because this is a non uh, this is not a point object it is a object with finite non-zero size. So, we also should consider moments. So, sum of moments associated with x direction should be 0, m y should be 0 and what is that? Okay. So, actually just to not create confusion because we have m x, m y and m x y we are calling them as force resultants. So, I will not use m x y, but essentially sum of moments in x, y, z direction they should be individually 0. We will not use m x, m y, m x y term because they are for moment resultants which is not same as moments. So, what we will do is we will implement these 6 conditions, these are 6 conditions and we will come up with 6 different equations of equilibrium which will ensure that this plate is in equilibrium. And we assume that the plate is in static equilibrium, so there is no acceleration term, there is no motion happening. So, the plate is in static equilibrium, so that is what we will ensure. We will start with the x direction, sum of forces in the x direction is 0. Okay. So, what do we do? Let us identify all the forces which are in the x direction. So, this is one force in the x direction, so this is not force, this is a force resultant. So, I cannot sum this up directly, I have to multiply by this by the length uh, delta y. This is another force resultant in x direction which will generate force in x direction. The third x direction force related resultant is this and this is the fourth one. Okay. So, if we do this, we get n x plus del n x over del x times delta x over 2 and this is times how much delta y minus n x minus del n x over del x times
times delta y delta x over 2 times delta y plus. So, this is n y x plus del n y x over del y times delta y over 2 times delta x minus n y x minus del n y x over del y times delta y over 2 times del x and all these guys should add up to 0 if the system is in equilibrium. Hmm. So, what you find is that this guy and this guy they cancel out because all the terms are being multiplied by delta x times delta y over 2. Okay. Also n y x and n y x they cancel out. So, if we do all this simplification ultimately what we are left with is del n x over del x plus del n y x over del y is equal to 0. This is the equilibrium equation for x direction related to forces. Okay. So, this is the force equilibrium equation. force equilibrium in x direction. So, the next step is, so this is a one equation, this that is the first equation. The next equation is sum of forces in y direction should be 0. So, this is the second condition for equilibrium. So, now let us look at that picture again. And what are all the forces in the y direction? So, in the y direction, this is one force, this is another force. What else? These n x y related terms are another, huh? this will also generate a force. Again, we have to multiply this by the length element, and this is the fourth piece of the puzzle. If we add up all these forces, what do we get? N y plus del n y over del y times delta y over 2 times delta x minus n y minus del n y over del y times delta y over 2 times del x plus n x y plus del n x y over del x times delta x over 2 times delta y minus n x y minus del n x y over del x times delta x over 2 times delta y is equal to 0. So, again these terms get cancelled out and also these terms go away because they are common to all the terms and eventually what we are left with is the second equilibrium equation which is del n x y over del y del x plus del n y over del y equals 0. So, these are the two equilibrium equations. So, this is force equilibrium in y direction. So, the next one is we will explore force equilibrium in the z direction and that is a little bit tricky and we will start that discussion tomorrow, but today what we have covered we have just started developing the equilibrium equations for composite laminated plates and we have developed these two equations del n x over del x plus del n y x over del y equals 0 and partial derivative of n x y with respect to x plus partial derivative of n y with respect to y is 0. These are the two equations of equilibrium related to force equilibriums in x and y directions respectively. So, that concludes our discussion for today. Tomorrow we will continue this discussion and we will start developing the equilibrium for the 
z direction force equilibrium for the z direction till then have a great day and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow bye